This episode of The Slipcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch, roasted order, veteran-owned coffee company. They are located in Perrysburg, Ohio, fair trade certified in USDA organic. Integrity is their core value. And, Jared. Yeah. They are fresh to order. Fresh roasted after That's the order. Part. That is, yes. <laughs> should not, should, you should not be going to the grocery store anymore. You should get, get your coffee fresh roasted from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. You can head on over to ironbeancoffee.com to place your order for shipping over $50. Great, great uh, products, whether you're looking for light, medium, dark, whatever you want, they have it. Go check them out. Again, that is ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the very first episode of The Silly Season presented by the Sloopcast. Kyle, is that how we should start introducing these, these new sub-shows? I don't even know what to call these. Should, should, should it be... Should the name should we should it be Silly Season, presented by the Sloopcast? The Sloopcasts, Silly Season, hmm. Silly Season, brought to you by the Sloopcast crew. Kyle, I don't know. <laughs> Do we even know what we call these things yet? Is sub episode what we're calling them? The silly string season. season. <laughs> uh, next time we do a podcast in person, I might just have to be like. <laughs> We've never done a video in person, though. No, we, we, we did one or two audio when we were in the same room, but we've never done video with us in the same room. Nope, we have it. That would be be interesting way to do it but maybe one of these we'd days. have to like pass the microphone back and forth or i'd have to get a second microphone or you'd have to get a second microphone depending upon when we were when and where we were doing it like my 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 little audio thing can't can't take two of these microphones <laughs> yeah all right Jared, let's go ahead, see let's go i was hop. i was ahead of you on that one gangland you can't you can't bring one of these microphones because it's a specialized connector and it wouldn't work nope all right, Jared, let's, let's go ahead and hop into today's episode. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Good, all right, Jared. How are you doing today? Uh, you know, I don't have to share my microphone with you, so I think we're doing okay. That's a joke for the YouTube audience. <laughs> ha! Only the YouTube audience right. gets that joke. We have, we have, we are now, Jared, into the off season, Jared, which we have labeled this as the silly season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is our new sub episode. This is our uh, we, we the the other conversation that the YouTube people were privy to was like, I don't know what we're calling these yet. I don't know if they're called sub episodes or or what. But yeah, uh, this is our new sub episode category of episode i don't i don't know um it's called the silly season uh the silly season if you do not know uh is a term that is used to describe essentially the season immediately after the season it's it's where you see things like coaching changes made stuff like that so uh it's also by the way a lot of times uh encompasses like free agency and in, in professional sports and all that but it's like it's like that chaotic thing it's that chaotic month or two right after the end of the season so that's what this is uh this is our uh very end sloop cast silly season because i like alliteration i do i like alliteration kyle kyle <laughs> kyle 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 ohio state has been making some coaching changes um it's uh yes, they have been yes, yeah. they have been a lot, lot of a lot of moving around that and the big some of the big things here uh Studra, Studra, um, Studrawa, Coach Coach Stud, there you uh, go. was uh, was fired. Um, last last we talked about the Ohio State football team here. Uh, 
let go, and then we have um, uh, Ohio State makes the Knowles hire official, and Ohio State reportedly, again, just stre stressing out reportedly, it's, reportedly. it's, all, all, it's all but official, hiring uh, UCLA's offensive line slash coordinator, uh, Justin Fry, as the Ohio State uh, offensive lineman coach. Yeah, um, uh, and run game coordinator, reportedly. Yes, that, and, that, and that's the other thing too. Yeah, the run game coordinator because who who would be the pass game coordinator, Jared? What? I mean, who, who sure, would be? It, it's I mean, it's probably like Kevin Wilson, right? Like no. Kevin Wilson's like the the offensive coordinator, but also the pass game coordinator, right? That's nope. no, no, nope. no. Nope. No, why would you give away a perfectly good title? And the paycheck that comes with it to someone who's already got the big paycheck and the big title. That's just well, silly. We have people to pay Kyle. And we have to give them titles to justify giving them paychecks. Yeah, Sorry, was that, that being too real? How, was that being too real? How, yeah. No, was it, that being it, too it, real? It, 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 it hit home pretty hard. Uh, <laughs> was, that, was, that, was that too real? <laughs> it was. But no, um, we're we're talking about uh, Brian Hartline. Brian Hartline getting promoted with a with a pay raise to go. He with got that. promoted. He has a, he's a coordinator now. Yeah, he's a passing game coordinator, but he's a coordinator. Damn it! And I'm you know I don't know if I've seen any financials yet, but I'm sure that's coming with a raise. That's what happens, by the way, when Marcus Freeman uh, offers you a job at Notre Dame, reportedly reportedly offers you a job at Notre Dame. Um, it doesn't sound like for the record that, that Hartline took leaving Ohio state seriously, by by the way, uh, it, it seems pretty obvious to me, at least based off of everything that he has said publicly and based off of everything I've heard that, that Hartline seems to be perfectly happy, just sort of chilling at Ohio state, like being at Ohio state, doing the best damn job he can, at and for Ohio State and just slowly working his way up. Mm. And by the way, he started as a GA, became the interim wide receiver coach. I don't know if that was officially his title or not, but essentially that's what he was after a certain someone embarrassed himself and the university and his entire family. Um, by the way, Zach Smith apologist. For those of you who are Zach Smith apologists, answer me this. Has Ohio State's wide receiver core gotten significantly better under Brian Hartline? Why do you still support this man? Why do you Hartline, still support this man? Hart, Hartline is the fifth longest tenured member of Ohio State's, State's current coaching, coaching staff. staff. Say it again? Ohio State, or Hartline, is the fifth longest tenured member of Ohio State's current coaching staff. Now, does, does, is that, like, active tenure? I'm asking, cause I'm asking about Combs. Because Combs has put in more years at Ohio State, as, a, as an official coach, anyway, than, than Hartline has. But um, not no, I, I consecutively. Think it's, I, think it's, I think it's... Yeah. Concurrence yeah. also a, a good word they use there. Um I think. Anyway. Because um, I'm just saying day, he might be moving Alfred Day and Wilson. Okay. Okay. All right. Because I was about to say, if he didn't count, Heartline probably be moving up a spot <laughs> before <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> before the silly season is over. Um Kyle, let, let's talk. You know, I know we talked about Knowles when, when Ohio State hired Knowles. They have officially hired Knowles now. That's actually done and officially happened now. I'm incredibly excited about this. I think he's an amazing coordinator. He brought defense to the Big 12, Kyle. Let, let's stop. Everyone, let's just stop and think about yes. how someone brought defense to the big 12 and a damn good defense, maybe one of the best, especially considering the talent, especially with consideration of like, if we're talking about recruiting stars, consider the amount of talent on that defense compared to the amount of talent on say 
you know, name the best defenses in the country this year, Georgia or whomever you want to name. Considering the talent, Ohio or Oklahoma State had the best defense in the entire yeah. country, period. Me, with, th- like, recruiting some, stars considered. Let me, let me throw, throw some quick numbers at you, Jared, real quick. All right. So, so he, brought, brought, he brought his Oklahoma State team first nationally in sacks, first in tackles for loss, second and third down defense, third in total defense, fifth in rushing defense, and eighth in points per game. Can we also talk about, Kyle, how he made Duke's defense really good? <laughs> this man brought competent football to Duke. Forget football or or forget defense or offense or, or anything else. The man brought competent football to Duke. What? How does a man do that? Kyle, how does a man bring competent football to Duke? You, you, you live in that area, Kyle. Does anyone ever talk about Duke football ever? Not, Not even when it was good. good. And by the way, Kyle, do you remember when it was good? One, One year. year. No, yeah, but when? Not how long, when? It's when Knowles was there. It's when Knowles was there. I think they had something like the 38th best defense in the country based off of stats or something. I don't know. I don't have those numbers in front of me. Yeah, yeah no. It, Duke big, was confident. Big, big get, yeah, yeah, big get, big get, get here. Just he's, uh, let's, let's see here. He, he was, was at Duke, Duke from 2010 through 2017. So one, one of those years. years. One of those years. Uh, yeah, th- I don't know if you want to. I want to look up like the 2017 Duke defense. Cause I think it was his last, I think his last year there, they had a really, really good defense, which is all, you know, it's, it's how he gets hired to Oklahoma state. Right. Oh, well, oh my God. Duke has a really good defense. Are you shitting me? Hire that man. It was, I'm sure what the, uh, the folks over at Oklahoma state were saying, which is, you know, now what, Ryan Day says, holy shit, Oklahoma State had a good defense. Hire that man. Now, it took him longer to set up that defense at Duke because, like, you know, trying to get players to play at Duke is is a thing. Um, God, did you find... I was, I was trying to kill time for you. Did you find anything? <laughs> uh, they, they had, had a winning, winning season, season in 2017. 2017. That, that's a lot for Duke. Mm-hmm. They were Duke was bowl eligible. That's a mm-hmm. thing for them. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, I can't, can't find stat numbers. Real that's quick, that's fine. We're, we're just gonna have to move. We're on. moving forward. Uh, now we've talked. We've jumped around a bit. So now we've talked about Knowles. Uh, Kyle, let's talk a little bit about uh, Stru Stru Drawa. Um. Uh, you know, a lot of people were asking if Ryan Day was going to make this move or not. A lot of people have been focusing on the defensive staff. You know, rumors about Larry Johnson retiring, conversations about, you know, obviously Knowles was hired. So everyone's like, oh, if Knowles is hired, that means someone's leaving. Matt Barnes uh, accepts a job at as the defensive coordinator at Memphis. Um, I, I still have a mad amount of respect for Matt Barnes, no matter what any disgraced former cornerbacks have to say about it uh, or disgraced former wide receiver coaches have to say about it. Um, I have a great deal of amount of, I have a great deal and amount of respect for, for Barnes um, to have taken over the defense mid season and to have turned it into semi-competent, fairly competent defense Without an off-season to implement, it's, it's a huge compliment to him. I, it's, it's a huge achievement. Uh, I think he. I, we've not we've not seen the last of Matt Barnes. Uh, his last yeah. stop, his best stop, won't be Memphis. So. I like Matt Barnes. So he takes the defensive coordinator job at Memphis. So now we have Knowles, and you know, there's a lot of conversation. You know, maybe Ohio State needs a uh, an additional 
you know, people are going after after Fleming's job. Um, so, you know, does Ohio State really need a special teams coordinator? You know, you do we don't have do we have enough defensive coordinator? You know, defensive staff. Uh, will Combs take a demotion? Uh, will, will Will Combs take a pay cut to stay? Will Larry Johnson retire? You know, there's all these questions about the defensive coaching staff. Meanwhile, those of us, especially those of us who follow recruiting closely, we're like, okay, but what about Coach Stud? Because Ohio State, you know, the past three, four, five, six, seven seasons, um, not that Stud's been around all that long, but mm. so specifically like, well, for the past two or three recruiting classes, right? Just studs. Studs everywhere. Best wide receiver classes in the country, some amazing corners, defensive linemen, quarterbacks. Oh my God, the quarterback recruiting. Uh, insane, all of it, just absolutely insane. Struggling to get offensive linemen. Uh, the, the weakest link in Ohio State's recruiting for the last two or three classes has been the offensive line. Ohio State has not been recruiting well on the offensive line. And you Stud got away with it for a couple of years, like because you never you never overreact to one bad recruiting cycle, right? No. Never. It's just stuff happens. But it was a couple in a row. Um then you had this, you know, despite all the recruiting problems, they they did have like a stud five offensive linemen this year. Part of that aided by um, the COVID season not counting and getting Thayer Munford back for yet another year. Paris Johnson being an Ohio kid also helps. Uh, Petit Faree was not recruited by Stud. Um, that was 100% a, um, a Greg Schiano recruit. Um, so this amazing five these amazing five offensive linemen that Ohio State had it, as far as potential and recruiting stars and all that and Ohio State like struggled to run the ball at times this year against better competition struggled against uh defensive tackles who were good you know if when the competition went up the offensive line from a running perspective had issues okay. well Jared that's because they were playing tackles at guards okay uh, I, I hear you, but I, I still, and again, the recruiting, the recruiting has been a, been a nightmare. Mm -hmm. So well, a change had to be made. So, uh, Greg Strudrawa no longer with Ohio state. Uh, we've already mentioned it earlier, but, um, let's go ahead and do a tiny tease and say, we'll, we'll let you know what Ohio state's doing after stud after this commercial break. All right, everyone, the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, let's hear from the Iron Bean Coffee Co Kyle, how long have I been telling everyone that the uh, the ultimate coffee sampler, the whole shebang, was out of stock? You, you just got to wait. For a while. You've, you've been saying it for a while, right? Guess what? It's finally back in stock. Better hurry, hurry and get that. that. I would hurry. Uh, the, the, the ground, the pre-ground, still out of stock. They, they don't have it in ground. But if you do your home grinding... And you're gonna buy and you want to buy some whole beans, you can still get the ultimate coffee sampler, the whole shebang at ironbeancoffee.com. Kyle, what comes in it? You might be asking. What comes in the whole shebang? Oh, uh, options here. Oh <laughs> my you, you so many options. It is uh was it 14? 12. 12. 12. Uh 12. Two and a half ounce packets of coffee included are the fear no evil, the fierce, the integrity, the drink from the skull of your enemy, the Odin, the dark Rocco, the Thor, the regular Rocco. That's right. Two Roccos for the price of one. Two Roccos for the price of one. Uh, the Ride or Die, the Cast Iron, the Rage Against the Dying of the Light, and the Loki, all in one shebang, all in one sampler, all of that for just $25. Uh, you can 
head on over to ironbeancoffee.com and like I, I, I throw all these coffees at you. I throw all these coffees at you and it's just like, oh, which I don't know which ones I might. Well, guess what? You got the sampler back. The sampler is back. So go go uh, go buy yourself a whole shebang over at the ironbeancoffeecompany.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Okay, Kyle. Um, I need to take a drink of water and, 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 and maybe clear my throat real quick. So why don't you tell us what Ohio State has done after uh, letting go of, of Coach Studd? Yeah, yeah, and, and again, again, <clears throat> again report, reportedly, again, um, reportedly, hiring, yeah, hiring Justin Fry. Uh, Justin Fry is the offensive coordinator at uh, UCLA, and this is this is a guy that Jose knows very, very well. As Fry was with um, Chip Kelly um, at UCLA. Um, but began but began his career as a graduate assistant at Iowa. Moved on over as a GA under Urban Meyer at Florida, and then crossed paths with Ryan Day uh, when they were at Temple back in 2011. So that's where Coach Day got to know Justin Fry as the offensive coordinator. And, and then the two, both of them got to coach together as well at Boston College until um, Chip Kelly snatched until Chip Kelly uh, snatched him up. So history, history between these two. I think this is a, I think this is a good high for Ohio State. Uh, I'm still still unsure about his recruiting part of it, but coming from UCLA to Ohio State, he'll be able to recruit a little bit better. But right. That's, 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 still, that's still one thing that hasn't been seen yet from Justin Fry. But I think I think, I think this is a good hire, and um, I, I think just time will will only tell um, moving forward. <laughs> I mean, it really just has to be. You don't have to be an elite recruiter at Ohio State. It helps. Oh God, does it help? Look at Brian Hartline. But. <laughs> Look at Larry Johnson, uh, but it helps. But I think the problem with Stud is that he sort of went from like competent enough as a recruiter, uh, but between age and maybe some some you know failing health, uh, was was sort of slowing him down um, as far as recruiting goes. So, um, you you bring in you bring in Justin Fry. Allegedly, reportedly, bring in Justin Fry, and you know it's a lot easier to recruit in an Ohio State polo than it is in a in a UCLA polo, right? Um, now, I and, and, like re- reportedly, allegedly, um, that Ryan Day and Fry are like very close. Kyle already told you how much time they've spent together professionally. Uh, they they are. Like I said, according to multiple things I've read, like very, very, very close. Like they are their friends. Like they are deep, deep friends. So, you know, I in, like the last time we heard that story, it turned out poorly. Urban Meyer hiring his best friend as a linebacker coach. It didn't go well. Um, but I don't think that's the case here. Uh, this is a highly sought after coach. Um, I think this is an amazing hire. And again, they're they're going to give him the passing game coordinator, or excuse me, the running game coordinator job to to go along. And again, like he's he's produced some really good offensive lines in the past. He'll he can do it again in the future. Um, he brings in more coordinating experience. Ohio, Ohio State has more coordinators than they know what to do with. Kyle, Ohio State has a head coach that calls plays. Uh, and was an elite offensive coordinator uh, in his time. Uh, they have Kevin Wilson, who is the offensive coordinator and a pretty good head coach in his time. Uh, they Now they have both a passing game coordinator and, reportedly, they have a run game coordinator. If only there were this many coordinators on defense, maybe Ohio State would be able to would be able to stop someone from getting in an end zone. (laughs) Yeah. 
reportedly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I think this is a great hire. Um, <laughs> I'm, I feel great about this hire. This is, by the way, probably an indication uh, that Chip Kelly is in fact done at UCLA. Um, that you know, I don't, I don't know if Ryan Day poaches someone from Chip Kelly like this because this is a lateral move. It's actually even kind of a backwards move, a little, a little bit of a backwards move. Um, yeah. Well, I'm sure that's one of the reasons why he, because he, he went from being coordinator to being run game coordinator, which, you know, sometimes those extra words make, make the title less impressive. But the, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, it just, it, it doesn't all feel like a thing that Ryan Day would do if, if Chip Kelly thought that Chip Kelly was going to be back at UCLA next year. So I, I'd keep an eye on that. Yep. yep. Um, I, th I, think I, think the, I think the, the next, next coaching, coaching change here, here, which everybody's talking about, what about our good old Coach, Coach, Coach Kerry Combs? Combs? Yeah, um, I, I mean, that's... We've asked the question a lot on the podcast in in the pat in the over the past few months, right? Um, mm -hmm. The uh, it's a big ask. It's a very big ask for him to to ask Kerry Combs to take a demotion and a and a pay cut because you can't keep paying him what you're paying him and. He's not the defensive coordinator anymore. Like you, you don't you don't bring in Knowles, pay him one point nine million dollars, and then make him a co coordinator. Um, that's that's not that's not how that works. So yeah. maybe maybe in a wild scenario, like out, Kyle, have you ever seen a coach take a demotion to stay on a staff? Whose name wasn't Luke Fickle? That, that was the, the one name there. It doesn't <laughs> happen. No. It it never happens. And like Luke Fickle, that, that situation was unique on, on multiple levels. And Luke Fickle just also just loves the university, right? Um mm -hmm. so yeah, it's uh I don't know, it's it's just, I just don't see it happen. It's not happening. I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say it, Kyle. It's not happening. A, 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 a decision, decision has, has to be made soon. I think, I think the decision. To... I'm gonna go as far as to say I think a decision's been made. Officially. <laughs> well, I don't think it has to. I don't think a decision has to be made. I mean, technically, Kyle, Ohio State doesn't even have an offensive line coach right now. If you want to talk about officially, not not reportedly, <laughs> officially. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, that's why I think we'll see a lot move, move, more movement. Tech, when, when this gets released here, I have a good feeling that maybe uh, Justin Pry will no longer be reportedly. <laughs> I think he'll How long did it take Knowles to go from reportedly to officially? I, I don't you don't have to look long. that up. I don't, I don't think it was that long. long. No. I, 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 don't, I feel like maybe it was a couple weeks, right? Wasn't it? Was it not a couple of weeks? I feel like it was a couple of weeks. So yeah, that 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 becomes a that becomes obviously a big question. Um, there's Parker Fleming and Al Washington both out there that I think maybe people are still keeping an eye on. Um, you know, I'm. It's not it's not my job to to say that someone should or you know should be fired. I'm not going to do that. I'm just trying to read like the the writing on the wall here. Um, Ohio State needs an additional defensive staff member. Mm -hmm. and let's, let's the, they they food. had way more guys on the defensive side of the staff or on the offensive side of the staff than the defensive side of the staff. And guess what? It kind of shows in the performance of the past couple of years. I, I don't think it's necessary um, nor smart. Uh, mm -hmm. it, if you're gonna have a if you're gonna have a special teams coordinator, if you're gonna have a special teams coordinator. Um, then your special teams better be freaking amazing. And uh, let's, I don't let's think not they were. forget about 
Let, let's, let's, let's not forget about Larry Johnson, Johnson too. too. Like, how, how much, much longer does he have, too? Right. And it's just, and you know, that that's up to Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson can be the defensive line coach and assistant head coach until he no longer wants to be. Uh, that's that's set in stone. Yeah. Like until he wants to leave, but he might want to leave. I, I think that's a, you know, at his age, any year could be the last mm. year. Now, reportedly, reportedly, he did tell uh, when recruiting Jack Sawyer and JT Tui Molau that he was going to be there for three years for at least, he says at least three years, I will be, you know, basically saying I'll be here for your first three years. Now things change. Situations change. So maybe that's no longer the plan, but we're, Reportedly, allegedly, reportedly, and allegedly, uh, he he did say that to to Sawyer and JT Tuimolo. So I, uh, you know, take that take that for what it's worth. And again, that was a year ago, and plans change, and blah blah blah. But and then there's Al Washington. Now I've I've heard report, reportedly, Al Washington's job is safe. Uh, they don't expect him to be going anywhere. Um, Al Washington's going to remain on the staff. So great news if you're an Ohio State fan who really likes Al Washington. <laughs> um, I know there's been a lot of, he's a linebacker coach and the linebackers haven't been playing well. Acknowledged. Um, to me, that was more of a schematic issue. He's been recruiting incredibly well. And I've we have seen growth out of the linebackers. I, I think to take that extra step, step now. now. He, he doesn't take that extra step, step now. now, but you also have to keep in mind that all he can do is train the linebackers and put them on the field. He he can't put them in position like that's that's up to the defensive coordinator. And so I, I think the question has to you know I'm trying to say this. It's you cannot blame just the linebacker coach if the linebackers aren't playing well especially considering how dependent upon the scheme they're playing in that linebackers are. Because like a corner, especially in a man-to-man defense, a corner, you can see Denzel Burke's amazing. Because you line him up man-to-man against someone and he's winning 99% of the time and he's always in their back pocket. You can see that. You can see a defensive end win or lose a one-on-one battle with an offensive tackle in a pass rushing situation. You can see that. Linebackers are very dependent upon where on the field you put them and the instructions they're given. You know what I mean? Because it's such a tweener position. Yeah. Um, and I saw, I don't think there's a lack of athleticism or skill or I, I would like to see, the one thing I would like to see that I didn't see a ton from the linebackers this year would maybe be a, a be a bit better at shedding blocks. But I think a lot of my issues with the linebackers have just been that they haven't been playing aggressive enough that you, we didn't see them playing on the other side of the line. And that to me is schematic. I think if you give them a little bit more freedom to read the defense and attack, as opposed mm-hmm. to always be sitting on their heels. Well, that by the way is going to help you win more it's it's a lot easier to shed a block if you have forward momentum as opposed to having your weight back on your heels because you're trying to see what's going on. So yeah. I know there's a lot of I know there's a lot of angst around Al Washington and yeah I know it's it's called physics gangland. <laughs> um, I don't it's I there's a I know there's a lot of angst around Al Washington and a lot of people want Al Washington gone and. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not one of those people. I really would like to see how the linebackers start playing under Knowles' system before I say anything about Al Washington. Because I, again, I don't think the player, he recruits well, and I don't think the, the, the deficiency at linebacker is due to skill as much as it is scheme. But Kyle, I guess he's also a bastard because he doesn't just play someone because he's a senior. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
That's that's a joke, by the way, for anyone who who may have missed that. All right, Kyle. Um, is that it for a silly season episode? I think, I think that's, that's it. it. I think that's, that's it. it. I, 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 feel I feel like that. that lot's going to change, change from now and next time, time that we talk about <laughs> about coaches <laughs> here. I feel like that this is just, just the beginning, beginning here. We're gonna. One to two more changes. More movement going on. One or two more changes. I'm gonna say two. I'm gonna say two more changes. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Combs and Fleming. Yep. yep. But that's a guess. Well, one of those is a guess. The other one, Co- Coach Combs isn't coming back. Reportedly, not coming back. Um, allegedly, reportedly, in theory. Someone told me, or didn't tell me. I don't know. Reportedly. Reportedly, I don't know. Allegedly. Kyle, why haven't you smacked me yet? I'm I'm about to. (laughs) I'm about to. About to smack you. Let's end end, end the episode here here before. (laughs) Before we get... um, Big, big things, things worse, worse here. here. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, man, he should have slapped me a long time ago. A long, long time ago. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, okay, Kyle, that's it. That's it. Uh, I'd like to encourage everyone, especially those of you listening to the audio version of this podcast, or I guess maybe if you're just watching the, this on YouTube and not following us, to please subscribe. Please subscribe to the podcast. There'll be a title card at the end. You can just click on that. For those of you listening to the audio version, uh, just go to YouTube and search Sloopcast and and you'll find us. Uh, Or you can go to uh, youtube.thesloopcast.com and and find us there. So yeah, we're just trying to get those subscribers up and I would appreciate that. And uh, come join our Discord server. We're always talking about stuff, especially... Uh, basketball and silly season and all of that and Kyle I think that's our first successful silly season of of the podcast so uh, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I, I really, really don't to be, be honest. honest like I'm, I'm, I'm looking <laughs> around here seeing see, 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 what's it seeing what's, what's around here in the lab and well it's I mean, kind of hard I, when we do two in a day yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean how about this Kyle you want to there, maybe there announce was a bit a of a game. There was there was a football game that played. I don't know if I'd watch it or not, but there there, there was, was a football game. Oh, yeah, I guess someone won a national title by the time this airs, huh? All right, Kyle, you want to do something stupid and predict a national title game that already happened? I mean, it already man, happened for the listener. Man, man why, why, man, why, why would why would anybody ever go against Nick Saban? Saban? Oh, yeah. Bama wins another national title. Saban's the best college football coach who ever lived. Um, Georgia still hasn't won a national title since 1981. 48-10 Bama. <coughs> I mean, I mean, they legitimately already crushed Georgia once this year. And it's not like it happened in September either. Like, it just happened, like, six weeks ago or something like that. So, yeah, I don't know. It's... I'll be surprised if it's not Bama. I'd be surprised if it's not Bama. Kyle, we owe everyone a we owe everyone a recruiting episode still. We still haven't done a building blocks. That's by the way, that's how we're branding those. Those are the Buckeye building blocks. Um, so we still have everyone a uh, a building blocks episode to talk about some of the latest uh guys to join the football team and probably do another at least one more. Maybe two more Sloop Hoop episodes this week? Maybe? Maybe. Maybe. Stay tuned. Maybe. Well, it might be a busy week. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying it might be a busy week. So uh, this is our new format. So everyone, I hope you enjoy it. They're supposed to be shorter, but I keep talking. So uh... <laughs> Kyle's like... Yes, you do, and shut up. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a band from Athens. They are called The Bummers. So uh, be sure to stick around for that. If you're listening to the audio version, all you have to do is nothing. Just just do nothing, and you'll hear The Bummers. Uh, for the YouTube folk, you can go ahead and click uh, the link down in the description. 
So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters once again. This is the this is Athens' very own The Bummers.